Hello everyone. In a recent video, I introduced a example project that was going to show how we could use a few Google Cloud Platform services and the Twitter API to build an interesting workflow. So here's an overview of the workflow. We essentially have a cloud function that can fetch the most recent X amount of time recent tweets. For example, we did 24 hours and we did 30 days. So our cloud function can fetch, say, the most recent 24 hours worth of tweets for a Twitter account from the Twitter API using the TweetPy Python package. Now, what we need to do next is these left and right circles. We need to have this cloud function triggered on a schedule, perhaps every 24 hours, every 30 days, etc. And then on the right side, we need to do something with these tweets. We need to store them in persistent storage so they could be used for data analysis and machine learning later. So the right side of this diagram here is inserting our tweets as rows into a BigQuery table. So Cloud Scheduler, Cloud Functions, and BigQuery are all Google Cloud Platform services. And this is an example of how we can pull them together to build an interesting workflow for data science. So like I said, in a recent video, we did the fetching from the Twitter API and running this in a cloud function on GCP. We tested it, it works. Great, let's now work on the cloud scheduler part. So here's our cloud function from the previous video called tweet fetcher func. We look at the source code, it's the same as the source code we developed and tested locally. We have this function entry point and it makes the requests and then prints out the tweets that it gets and then returns success 200. It was working when we tested it. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to open a new tab and go back to console.cloud.google.com and this time search for the cloud scheduler service. Once that loads, we see in the center of the screen, no cloud scheduler jobs to display and the option to schedule a job. So we wanna click schedule a job. Essentially with cloud scheduler, we can create jobs that run at certain times or with certain frequency and they can interface with other services like in our case, cloud functions. So let's give this job a name. I have one here, periodic tweet fetcher. That sounds good. Leave the region by default, US central one. That's where my cloud function is. Uh, and then under frequency, this is where we express how often or at what time we run our cloud scheduler job to run and trigger our cloud function. So we put a cron expression string here. For testing, let's do every minute. So as you can see, that was star, 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 five stars with spaces. That will run every minute. And it even tells us minute every minute, perfect. And then for the time zone, we can just do UTC or universal time. hit continue. Under configure the execution, we'll do HTTP. The URL we will need to get from our cloud function. So if we go back to our cloud function, under trigger tab, there's the trigger URL. We'll copy this. And we'll paste it as the URL in order to make our request what type of request we want, a simple get request. If we have any headers that we'd like to add to our request, we can add them here. Recall that we expect our request to be empty, so we don't need to add anything here. And then under auth header, we're gonna do add OIDC token, authorization used for all Google Cloud and third-party endpoint calls. We'll need 
to set this up, we'll need to create a service account. This service account will need to have the role Cloud Functions Invoker in order to make an HTTP request to our Cloud Function with the appropriate authentication. All right, so let's give the service account name, Cloud Function Trigger Service Account. Create and continue. Under role, this is where we're going to search for cloud functions invoker. Ability to invoke HTTP functions with restricted access. We'll hit continue. And then we'll hit done. Now, if I go back, I should be able to refresh, see my service account. And it says this service account must have permission to invoke the target. For example, the cloud function invoker role is required to schedule a cloud function. Perfect. We did that. And then for the audience here, we're going to put the same trigger URL. We'll hit continue. We can leave all of these retry configurations at their default values for our simple demo here. All right, looks like we have a scheduled job. It says status of last execution has not run yet, but it should run every minute. So we shouldn't have to wait too long to see this run. So I've let this run a while and I can hit refresh over here to refresh the logs and you can see it's reliably going off every minute, 53, 54, 55, 56. We will come back towards the end of the video and change our cron scheduler so that it goes off every 24 hours, but let's leave it going off every minute so that we can test our next and final part of our project example, which is setting up our tweets to be inserted into a BigQuery table. And this time I'm going to search for BigQuery. Make sure you're still in the same project as your cloud function and your cloud scheduler. We'll expand our workspace for our project and we'll need to create a data set. So I'll call this tweets data set and I can leave all of the defaults and hit create data set. And now within the data set, I'll need to create a table. We'll give it a name. I'll call it tweets table. And now we need a schema for our table, which is where we express what columns or fields our table has and what their types are. So let's turn this on to edit as text. And we'll be able to provide our schema, which will be a list of dictionaries, list of JSON, one for each one of our columns, our fields in our table. So our first one will be for tweet ID. So its name will be tweet ID. Its type will be string. And this is gonna be our primary key for our table. So its mode will be required. Essentially, we won't allow any rows to be inserted into this table if it doesn't have a tweet ID. All right, next we'll do name, author ID. And same thing here, type will be string.
Next, we'll insert created at. And this type will be date time. And then our last one here will be the text of the tweet. All right, that looks good. Let's hit create table. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our cloud function and update the code to be able to insert our tweets as rows into this tweets table. We're going to edit. We'll go to the code. We'll need to add our import statement for BigQuery. So from google.cloud import BigQuery. And then we'll need to have names for our data set ID and our tweets table ID. So I believe I called these tweets data set and tweets table. These need to match tweets data set, tweets table, looks good. Okay. And now where we had our to do insert tweet rows to a big query table, what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to call a function that we're going to write here in a moment called insert rows to big query. And we'll pass in those tweet rows. This is just going to be another Python function in our code here. We'll need to make a BigQuery client object. Thankfully, because we'll be running this code in a Google Cloud function in the scope of our project, we won't have to do any authentication with our BigQuery client. Everything should be good to go. All right, we'll need a reference to the data set that we want to insert into. So this is where we'll pass in our data set ID. And then we'll need to get a table reference from the data set. So data set ref dot table. And this is where we pass in our table ID. And then we can attempt to insert our rows using this table ref. There could be some errors, so we'll store those in a variable and take a look at them. So client.insert rows json table ref and our rows. Remember our rows essentially is a list of dictionaries. So those dictionaries can be thought of as json objects. And we'll check here to see if the length of this errors list is zero. If it is, then we'll just print out to the logs, new rows have been added. But if something goes wrong, then this list will have a size greater than zero. And we'll print out encountered errors while inserting rows. And then we'll just print out these errors. All right. Hope we don't have any typos or issues because if so, then deploying this cloud function in its second version will of course fail, but we'll be able to look at the logs and see why it failed if it fails. So let's see if this is going to work. Looks like it deployed successfully. Let's go over to the logs. Looks like the last time it went off was 4.08. So let's wait till 4.09 and see 
if it's successful. All right, it is 409, so I just refresh the logs and we see new rows have been added. That's awesome. Now we go back to our BigQuery tab. We click on our tweets table and we should be able to go to preview and see our tweets. So here they are. Awesome, that worked great. There's that Windy City's Eggs, the first one that we've seen in our testing. Our final task then for this video is to go back to Cloud Scheduler and click on our periodic tweet fetcher job and change the frequency from every minute to something that goes off every 24 hours. You can choose what the reference time is, like you could do midnight UTC, like zero zero, or you could figure out what midnight is in your time zone and do that. For testing purposes, I'm going to choose a time that is just a few minutes from now to make sure that it goes off. And then if it goes off, then I'll check again in 24 hours and make sure that it goes off again. 1111 or 2311. So I like to use these nice cron expression generators or editors. Here's one I just Googled and found, crontab.cronhub.io. So if I want to create an expression for a job going off at, let's say, 11, 13 in two minutes, let's try it. So this would be 13 space 23, 11, 13. Perfect, this will go off every day at 11, 13. And I could go back, paste this, and it says midnight an hour at 11, 13 p.m. Perfect, I'm gonna hit continue and update. That's about one minute from now. Just refresh the page, it says success. Let's go back to our function, refresh our logs. And it looks like it did go off. I'll note that we've been inserting duplicates of our tweets into our BigQuery table. That's okay, we've just been testing, making sure that our workflow is up and running, and we can now go back and delete these tweets from our table if we want and start afresh. I will mention just one more time that based on this Twitter account that we decided to use, we had to change our time delta to 30 days because there weren't any tweets within the most recent 24 hours. So you'll wanna change that back and then test again you know, over the next couple days and make sure that you're not missing any tweets as we've got our 24 hour cloud scheduler running and we're getting the most recent 24 hour tweets from that account. All right, we went through the entirety of our workflow here and it looks like everything is working. I'll check tomorrow, same time, 24 hours from now and make sure that it's still running. It is now 24 hours later and we're looking at the logs for our tweet fetcher function cloud function. You can see that it triggered what is now yesterday, the 25th at 16.13, and then it didn't trigger again until the 26th, which is today at 16.13. So it does look like our cloud scheduler job to trigger this function every 24 hours at a preset time is working. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching.